Hey everyone, Facebook, YouTube, and other platforms support 360 degree panoramic images, which can be created in 3D software, including Blender. Since we are already working in 3D space, instead of making a simple 2D video or image, why not make one of these? They can be used with virtual reality headsets, or we can use this technique to create our own HDRI backgrounds. I'm going to show you everything I know about how to create, export, and upload 360 degree panoramic images and videos using Blender. Let's jump into Blender. This is a scene I made as part of a recent art challenge from Kitbash 3D. Something we need to be aware of when creating a scene for a 360 panorama is that everything will be visible in all directions from the camera. So if we're used to hiding light sources or other things off screen, we may need to get creative with how we do that. We need to make sure the scene is good to go and well lit in every direction. Also important, we want the camera to be flat. It shouldn't be tilted on either the X or Y axis. And wherever we want the default view of the 360 panorama to be, is where we should point the camera. Where I have this camera pointed right now will ultimately be looking forward in the image or video by default. So with a camera placed in the scene, we can set up our render. Unfortunately, as of now, we can only make these panoramas using cycles. They're not going to work in Eevee because the cameras don't have the proper options. So we are in cycles and there are really only two things we need to set up. The first is our resolution found in the Output Properties panel. These 360 panoramas are mapped to wrap around the viewer in a very specific way, and they need to have a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. That means they need to be exactly twice as wide as they are tall. So if we want to make our X resolution 4000, our Y resolution needs to be 2000. If X was 2000, Y would need to be 1000, etc. But as a side note, this image is going to be wrapped around a lot more real estate for a viewer, so they really should be pretty high resolution. The one I showed you before was 8000 by 4000 resolution, and it probably should have been a little bit bigger. But the point is, this number needs to be double whatever this number is, or it won't work correctly. The second setting we have to adjust is the camera type. With the camera selected, we go to our camera property settings. And the very top setting is the camera type, which defaults to the perspective camera we are all probably used to. Well, we need to change this from perspective to, you guessed it, panoramic. And under panoramic type, there are several options, but we need to make sure we are on equirectangular. And the reason this won't work in Eevee is that this equirectangular option isn't available for cameras in Eevee. Yes, for animators, this is very sad. That's it for the settings. Let's render a still image and see what it looks like. I'll come back to rendering a video in just a bit. As you can see, we get a very distorted image of our scene, but that's okay, that's exactly what we want. If you've ever gotten an HDRI from a site like Polyhaven, you've seen this look before. This is just how the image is mapped in order to wrap around the camera in 360 degrees. It's kind of like how a map is wrapped around a globe. Now this seems like we are done and you'd think that we could just upload this to Facebook or wherever and it'd be all good, but it won't. If I post this to Facebook right now, it will post just as we see it right here. There's an invisible setting we weren't able to give this image in Blender. You see, every image file can contain EXIF metadata about a whole bunch of things like which camera took the photo, where it was taken, etc. Well, metadata is also what tells a program like Facebook, for example, that this is supposed to be a 360 image. As far as I know, and I've checked pretty thoroughly, there's no way to add this information in Blender, despite us being able to add other metadata to a render. But there are a few ways we can do this after we render. First, I'd like to ask if you could take just a second to hit that like button below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have access to Photoshop, you can use Photoshop to convert the image to a 360 sphere. If you have a similar image editor, it can probably also do this. I'll quickly show you the way in Photoshop and then two other ways that can work if you don't have Photoshop. In Photoshop, just open the image. Go to the menu at the top and under 3D, find Spherical Panorama. Then with the image layer selected, choose New Panorama Layer from Selected Layers. It actually gives us a 360 degree scene we can look around in. That's pretty cool. Next, go to 3D, Spherical Panorama, and then Export Spherical Panorama. Although we can select from a bunch of file types, Facebook only seems to work when I use JPEGs, and all the panoramas I see appear to be JPEGs. So it may be the only type that works, let's just choose JPEG. Now the newly converted JPEG will look exactly like it did before, but it has that important metadata labeling it as a 360 image. If we go to Facebook and upload it, it still looks the same here, but it has this little icon. That icon means Facebook recognizes this as a 360 image and will display it as one, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so what if you don't have Photoshop? There are two other options. You can search for an EXIF fixer application. There are a ton of free ones. These are simple programs that allow you to edit an image's metadata. Full disclosure, I've never actually used one, but if you know about metadata from cameras, this would work. 
or we can go to one of the countless online converters out there. Most of them are great. You simply upload your original image, it converts it to a 360 file, and then you download it. There are a ton of free ones, you don't need to pay for this. I did find one that resized my image, which I didn't like, and another one added some branding to the metadata, which I also didn't like. So I will link to a free one in the description that seems to work well. All right, let's talk about creating a 360 degree video. The fundamentals are the same. We need to be in cycles. We need a two to one aspect ratio. The camera will be panoramic and set to equirectangular. I'll assume you already know how to render animations in Blender, and you'll do it the same way. If not, I have a full video on this if you need it. Render out a completed video using the video sequence editor, or export the image strip to a video editing software program. I use Adobe Premiere, and with Premiere, we can create video for VR pretty easily. If you don't have a video editor, you'll need to convert the video into 360 degree format, just like we did with the still image. How I recommend doing this is by using the Google Spatial Media Metadata Injector. That is a mouthful. It's a free and simple download for Windows or Mac. I will link to the official download page. We choose our video and click this My Video is Spherical box. Press Inject Metadata, then choose where we want the new 360 video to be saved. In like a second, it's added the required data to our video. Now it should be good to go for Facebook, YouTube, and other media players. There are more advanced things to explore, which are gonna be for another video, such as using stereoscopy settings. This can make a 3D image by actually rendering multiple images the way the old school 3D glasses work, but this also works for virtual reality headsets. If you wanna add stereo sound to the video, that's another area we can explore later. I use both Photoshop and Adobe Premiere in this video, and if you want to get a subscription to those, I have an affiliate link in the description. Check out brandonsdrawings.com for a growing number of free Blender tutorials, guides, and resources. Throw me a like and hit that subscribe button if you're feeling kind. And as always, stay creative.